Mic check, 2-1-2, bitch. Let's dive into the game last night. The Oklahoma City Thunder on a seven-game win streak come into the double AC. They were without Russell Westbrook, but they had even won two games in a row without him. So, uh, well, James, what was your your impression going into that game? Did you, did you have a good feeling for the Mavs, given there was no Russell Westbrook, or did you think that they uh they were still in for a hard time well i thought they still it was still going to be a battle even though russell westbrook wasn't in the game but just schroeder dennis schroeder is not chopped liver he is a good player mm -hmm. um he was a good player with the uh, the hawks uh, and he came over in the back of all has been a good backup player for them also i think the thunder were one of the top teams defensively in the league as well uh, long going with that seven game win streak so I don't definitely feel like it was going to be a cakewalk, especially coming off that loss with the Utah Jazz the way they did. So I definitely didn't think it was going to be a cakewalk. They wanted to see how they were going to play, um, you know, if they were going to respond from that that, lo that big loss against Utah. Yeah. Um, and they got hot early, and that was the biggest key to me. Uh, they got hot early. Uh, people got involved early. Uh, you see Donick um, had another great game uh, like he did, 28, I mean, 22 points. Six uh, boards, eight assists. I think eight assists was his career high, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, and also, uh, J.J. Barrera, who has kind of been uneven this year, mm -hmm. um, had a really good game, and that's who they really need to, you know, come off that bench as spark. And he played good throughout, you know, getting guys involved, taking it to the hoop, throwing the alley-oops, um, you know, kicking it out, hitting big threes. So, um, yeah, I was a little worried about it. Uh, but to see us get that big lead first, it's, it, when, it seems like whenever we get to kind of get a big lead, we can kind of, you know, feel better about that instead of kind of getting down and have to come and fight back. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the Thunder, you know, I, I know, again, they were without Westbrook, and that's obviously going to shift the dynamic, but they were on a seven-game streak. They had won two straight without Russ. And it's a month into the season, basically, but they are statistically one of the top three defenses in the league. Uh, very, very good rebounding team, very good on generating steals. That's mostly because of Paul George, who I think last year was like second in the league in terms of uh, steals. So they can get after you, no doubt. And as you said, uh, Schroeder, very good point guard. I mean, OKC arguably has, I would say, if not the best backup point guard in the league, certainly in the discussion for it. Uh, because you, you're taking a very effective point guard from Atlanta. He's now the backup. And even without Westbrook now at the point guard position, they can still get 20-plus points out of a guy. So that they are dangerous. They do have some limitations with regard to their shooting. Offensively, they, they've been bad. But who knows, man. It, it was The refreshing thing for me with Dallas is Dallas was able to come in and kind of enforce their will uh, defensively. First opponent Dallas, I believe, has held to less than 100 points this season, and you know they 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 get a comfortable win. That's that's another thing that was refreshing in it as well. It wasn't a uh, close game. This was a lead, as you mentioned. They jumped out to a lead, and even though OKC trimmed into it a little bit, they never really had a chance to overtake. It felt like right. But, and that was, that's, that's a good. That's a good thing because, like I said, it was comfortable. We had the 12 point lead, and you know, kind of maintained it during the halftime. And as I said before, there was a couple spurts where they got close. Um, but as I said, J.J. Barrera came through with some big uh, buckets, especially late in that fourth quarter, a couple of big threes. Um, yeah. And that, that really kind of stabilized that victory. And a, a much needed one. Um, if you look at coming off uh, L.A. the last time we talked, I believe they played three games since that last time we talked last Sunday. And to be two and three um, in that span is not bad at all. Yeah, no, not not at all. And, you know, with Berea, as you mentioned, uh, he, he's really struggled throughout the early part of this season. So maybe this was finally him kind of breaking out a little bit like that and getting a chance to kind of find his stride. Because, yes, one of the things that we felt good about with this Maverick team was that they would have a solid bench unit. And a lot of that was determined by J.J. Berea being able to have a big impact on the game, bring uh, some good pick and roll play, some scoring and some leadership. And, you know, whenever Dirk does make his debut, which sounds like it'll be within the next couple weeks, two to three weeks approximately, uh, that, that'll that give them some more veteran scoring presence down the stretch as well. So that's something that is encouraging, but we weren't seeing it execute quite right yet regarding JJ. And that's part of why the bench had been up until now, a little bit frustrating, but I am very encouraged by the the outburst he had. I don't have his numbers right in front of me, but I can pull them up real quick. He had, I think, twenty one points. Yeah, twenty one points. 
21 points, three boards, and five assists. 21, three, and five. Okay. Yeah, that that's a very, very efficient game for him. And uh, <laughs> I see this coming across here. This is just funny. This is a division rival thing, and it does tie to OKC, who we were just talking about. The Rockets are already planning to get rid of Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> He's already been informed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to make of that. But anyway, that that's a different subject. That just caught my eye because I was like, hey, Houston, Mavs in-state rival and Thunder. There's that other connection there as well. So felt somewhat relevant to at least bring up, but that's not what we're talking today. Uh, right, yes. Right. Uh, one thing that's been really unheralded for the Mavericks this year, I think, I think Dorian Finney-Smith has been fantastic for them this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, he, yeah. He's very much showing in, in terms of his energy, his presence, and he's actually hitting threes as well this year. His shooting is much improved, which is nice to see. But, I mean, sometimes I'll see a, see something from him, and it kind of reminds me of Al Farouk Aminu uh, when he was a Maverick a few years ago. And it's nice having that kind of player again. And this is a guy who was an undrafted free agent out of Florida, I believe. So really, really cool seeing him get to do something. I, I've seen plenty of people making the case that, you know, he should be just the new starter at this point. Uh, obviously, the rotation's going to change up every now and then, but it, it's interesting. Um, there, there is potential in this team. Yeah, I, I mean, I like uh, definitely what, like what you've been saying about uh, uh, Finley Smith uh, shooting good from the field goal. I mean, shooting good from the field, fifty-one percent. And it's like you said, it's been unheralded, averaging about eight points a game. And it's been really coming through when they really needed him. I mean, he had 11 points in the last contest, six boards. So I like the versatility with the size. He's about 6'8", about 220, 225. And like you said, oh, El Amin, whatever the heck his name is. I know I can't be. Al Farouk Amino? Yes, that's the name. But he, yeah. like I said, he has a kind of lanky side. And even remember when they had, we had Josh Howard. Yeah, that six seven in, that real kind of lanky type guy that can kind of do a lot of things it really kind of just helps the team because he's so versatile. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So in the case of the Mavericks here now, they've won two of their last three. You mentioned the Utah game, which was a frustrating game for them for long, long portions of that game. They were nowhere in it. Never really felt like they were overtaking that game. But Utah is a very good a uh, very good defensive team, and they were a team who, when they ran into Dallas this last time, they were on their own four-game skid, so they were desperate for a win, and I think that's just a team that between Donovan Mitchell and like a Rudy Gobert and Ingles and all of that, that was going to be a tough win to get no matter what, whether or not it was on the road. Like Even in the double AC, I would have said that would have been a tough win to get. But I, I do think Dallas is starting to play better basketball. And it's, you know, people said, oh, well, they beat up on a, a bad Wizards team. You can't make any, you know, real proclamation about that. I don't know what the Wizards record is right now, but I know at the time they were something like one in seven. So, yeah, you couldn't make much of it at the time. But now you have seen them against another team who, again, they were the Thunder were seven and four coming into last night. So you get a good, good win against a good defensive team. Now, they weren't always great last night, but part of that was just Dallas's shot-making ability, keeping them out in front, I felt. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it looks like they're, um, you know, we, we talked last week when you talked about the freeze out was uh, the veterans and we got DeAndre uh, Jordan and uh, Wes Matthews with a freeze out. It looks like they were uh, being a lot more supportive um, this week during the um, games. Mm -hmm. You know, Donna uh, had a couple of good alley uh, to Jordan a couple of plays and it looks like you know they were looking for him uh seen a couple of times that Jordan was coming on a fast break kick it out to Donick and that's what they need to do you keep we obviously understand that Donick is the Mavs best player right now we can yes. throw out the age we can throw out everything else he is he's the guy and everybody else kind of needs to you know kind of uh, flow off of him I mean just watching him and uh, the last game I mean he had 24 points I mean uh, I mean when, when they played against the Jazz he creates so many different shots, man. I, he's got one shot where he goes to the hole and he kind of hangs and he uses his off arm and he kind of lays it off the basket. I mean, he's you, rarely seeing these type of guys coming in, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, with that size, being able to control the game like that. And he gets the ball in the fast break, he can take it to the hole, he can kick it out, you know, he, yeah. he can you know, drop it off for the assist, get fouled. I mean, we just – the Mavericks, you know, I think they asked like Rick Carlisle, they're going to start, you know – putting more plays for him, getting more offense for him. 
And, you know, Carlisle's talking about, well, we want to worry about this defense. I get that, but you got to start understanding this is the man on the team right here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they, they the team kind of had this, I, I don't know if you would phrase it this way, but kind of like a come to Jesus moment a little bit after that home loss to the Knicks. That's when you have uh, Wesley Matthews meeting and having that, depending on who you ask, heated discussion with Donnie Nelson outside the locker room after the game. And mm-hmm. we know there was some internal discussions. And even though, you know, the, the whole question and we, I, I caught a lot of flack for just talking about the potential of like the weird Doncic freeze out. I didn't think that it was like a full freeze out, but I did say there was something odd going on. And mm-hmm. Rick, Rick Carlisle kind of suggested, you know, like, oh, it's not really anything to talk about. We had some important stuff to talk about, though, and we did we did discuss it internally. I'm like, well, you just said you had important stuff to talk about internally, and then that it was discussed. So wouldn't that fall into the – and then the fact that it's been such a complete turnaround since then, I, I don't know if they just kind of all got back on the same page after that or what. I haven't noticed personally any – issues with like body language or anything like that. Doncic seems mm-hmm. to be getting the ball more, not so much being kind of left out and dry at times. So mm-hmm. they're, they're doing better. I think offensively, obviously the jazz game's rough cause they're such a good defense, but I do think that they are doing better as a whole since that time. And, you know, like you said on this Doncic, 22 points, eight assists, six boards, you put the ball in his hand good things tend to happen. And I do think as well, you're seeing Wes Matthews when he's trying to more so create the offense himself. He's doing it more with the second unit now, which makes a lot more sense because it's not so right. much taking as much of the offense away where you have stretches of time where Luca or even like Dennis Smith are just kind of standing out there while Wes goes one-on-one. Right, and that's what you want to see. Keep on letting Wes be that catch-and-shoot guy's going to trade and kick it out to Wes. Uh, but I think a, a few things that really kind of uh, hurt, uh, you know, even going back to that Jazz game, got to gotta get these turnovers together. I think they had 25 turnovers in that Jazz game. Yes. Came up to 31 points for the Jazz. That cannot continue to happen. And also, when I watched the last two games, even with the Jazz and the um, uh, the Thunder, even though we got the victory against the Thunder, it was seems to me it was just too much penetration from the guard play um, from uh, – uh, Dennis Schroeder and also Rick Rubio, and I think that's the issue. As much as I love Dennis Smith Jr., he has the athletic ability to be a very good defensive player, and sometimes we just don't see it. Too many times Dennis Schroeder was getting into the paint, and that's going to be an issue going forward. That's when Rick Carlisle was talking about it's got to be better defense uh, because if you're letting that penetration come from the top, from the guard play, you see it too many times. They just throw it up, alley-oop dunk, or that pick and roll will just kill you to death. Yeah, so it's got to be better. Got to be better guard flat, guard defense from Wes Matthews and Dennis Smith Jr. Um, I'm not saying nobody else. And even there was, uh, you know, they were saying DeAndre Jordan had mandatory defense with, and the effort was kind of a little bit questioning in the Jazz game. So yes, absolutely. That's got to be talked about more than anything else. Even though the offense is doing better, and that's great, it's got to be defense first. Yeah, a- absolutely. And that that's a big thing for DeAndre as well. Um, that that's pretty much worthy of its own segment at some point as well. And we'll see if that trend continues before we really dive into it. But I think Max might have something on that probably here in a bit, talking about DeAndre Jordan, kind of where he was projected for his impact and everything and showing where it's falling short in those areas. And yeah, a lot of it, it's not even just that he's not having the rim protecting presence you would expect. Sometimes it's just effort, which is for a, an 11 year vet or whatever he is. That's really frustrating. If you're looking right. at that and you're like, dude, you're getting $23 million. You're supposed to be leading this team. And especially with young stars on this team, like you have, you of all people have to bring that effort and fire to lead by example. Yeah, but you know what I also think it may be? I mean, this is just my opinion on it. We don't know if DeAndre Jordan is going to be in the Dallas Maverick uniform next year. Yeah, and no, I think that, that's that does true. Have a, I think that does have a part to play in it. Uh, some guys may, you know, when you know that you're possibly going to be on that team another three to four years, you get more invo- emotionally invested into that team. Mm-hmm. When you have a one-year deal like DeAndre did, and then we all know about the back and forth that happened with Mark Cuban. They say bygones would be bygones, but it still happened. Right. And I was just saying, you can be more of a disconnect from a player, maybe with the effort, if he knows that, hey, I might not even be on this team next year, so why? I'm not saying that this is, but I'm just saying it can happen um, because you don't have a guy that basically could be just a rental player. 
right. that guy may not do as much effort for that team because he may not be with that team next year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I see a uh, shout out to Taylor Matter in the comments. I see your question, or rather your comment, uh, saying he was surprised Luka didn't struggle a little more offensively than he did against Paul George. And I think that's a good point. He started rough. I think he started like one for five with like two or three turnovers. A couple of them I think were pretty ugly too. And he got he got it figured out. I mean, that's one thing we've seen about Luka and that's so encouraging. It's not just that he's shooting lights out from the field, including from three, but he's able to adjust. He, it's, it's one of those guys who has an all-around game offensively who if you take away, if his three-point shot's not falling, for instance, he's not going to sit back there and just keep chucking them until one goes in again. He's a guy who right. can get his shot off the dribble. He can hit nice floaters. He can even go in and absorb some contact. We saw a couple times in this game where he hung in the air, took the content or contact rather, mm-hmm. and then finished like really impressive stuff from him to be able to do that. That's an element. I honestly didn't know he would be able to do as well as he has to this point in his NBA career. I thought that would be an area he struggled and that, offensively he would be more I, I knew about the runner I knew about that part of his game and I figured that would be money for him but I, I've been impressed with his all-around prowess it's it's no doubt it's not just that he's the most exciting guy from an, uh from a playmaking standpoint it's that he's flat out the best offensive player they have yeah and it just he also it also helps when you know you got that confidence when you kind of know you can do those things yeah, um, a lot of players, those players that come in the NBA have a lot of talent, but may may not have that mindset. And it looks like he's had that mindset. He's been playing in some of the toughest leagues overseas since he was young, and that really helps these players uh, when they transition to the NBA, uh, especially when he was in the forefront of it. So I just think that he's just continuing um, to uh, to grow. And uh, like you said, he does doesn't have rely on one type of shot, but I like not just how he relies on one type of shot, is that he can do other things like rebound, he can pass the ball, he can uh, play good defense. It looks like he can do a lot of other things. When you see the stat line of 22, 6, and 8, I think that's just what you're going to see on a regular basis as far as his stat line going forward and his ultimate season stats. You're going to see him over the 20 points. You're going to see him get about five to six assists a game, and you're definitely going to see him get about seven to eight rebounds because he can do those type of things because, number one, he has that type of frame and he has that type of game to transition to it. Yeah, no, I I agree, absolutely. And uh, I'm throwing up on the stream here uh, after the game. This is just a random picture I wanted to share in some way from the stream. Uh, After the game, he's wearing uh, in the locker room a Dragon Ball Z shirt, which is, it's funny to me to see, like, how many, like, millennial players obviously are in, like, you know, the NFL and the NBA. And so you get these weird moments where, like, you'll have uh, Embiid or someone, like, watching Dragon Ball Z, like, before or after a game. It's just like, this is so weird, like, having, like, these giant professional athletes watching anime or something. Like, yeah, it, it, it's just, it amused me. So I wanted to share that graphic there. Uh, another point on Luca, he is the, uh, he had his seventh 20 point game of the season. No other rookie has more than four. So for all, and not only that, he's he's getting his points, more points than Trey Young on fewer shots per game. Right, and, I do, and that's what you want. Yes, exactly. He's a very efficient scorer. Uh, for instance, in my article I wrote last week, I can't remember which day it was, I want to say like Wednesday or Thursday, uh, the article I wrote talking about that and why Doncic is kind of outpacing the rest of this rookie class right now for the Rookie of the Year award, I, I spoke about that and something, you know, we, we know that Trey Young can get hot and that he can rain threes from anywhere, but it is interesting to note how right now, or at least as of the time of that article, he was shooting only 27% from three, whereas Doncic was 40% and 48% from the field overall, essentially. So it, it's yeah. it's insane the efficiency with which he's enacting this. And, you know, it, one thing I'd like him to improve on, other than defense, of course, I know that's what a lot of his haters still like to bring up. Uh, I would look mm-hmm. at it and say, I, w- I would look at it and say, I'd, I'd like to see that assist to turnover ratio improve a little more. Um, that's mm-hmm. the one element that I, I had a little bit higher expectation. But I, I don't mean to look, look a gift horse in the mouth, mouth here. Uh, Atlanta, for some reason, wanted that trade and basically passed on him. And there you go. Now we got a, the, the future of the franchise in a sense. 
Well, I know one thing. I'm definitely taking that trade all day. You can have Trey Young. You can keep him. Uh, stay with him the rest of your career. All good. We, I'll, I'll take Luca over Trey Young all day. Um, like I said, you know, it, it's volume scoring. I mean, yeah, Trey Young is scoring a lot of points, but you know, he takes these crazy shots, man. They're not sometimes not within the flow of the game. And I rather a player that's going to continue to continue to make the team better. That's yeah. what I like. This Trey Young playing the point guard position, does he make the team better? That's what I look like. Yes, you can score a lot of points. Yes, you can shoot three pointers. Yes, you can do this. But you're playing the point guard position. Are you making your team better? Even at Luka not playing the point guard position, playing almost like, to me, like a point forward, yeah. to me, he makes his team better. He mm-hmm. does things to make his team better. And the team, to me, elevates. And I don't see where Trey Young does that. And maybe he not – Maybe he may do that later in the career, but when I'm looking at the head-to-head comparison and with the trade, I'm definitely happy with what uh, Luca brings to the table, and it's only going to get better. He hasn't mm-hmm. even tipped. He hasn't even touched the surface. You know what I'm saying? This kid is 19 years old. He hasn't even touched the freaking surface of how good he can be. Yeah. Think, let's think about it, and I don't even want to jump that far, but think about when he's like 23, 24. Are you serious? This kid is going to be a monster, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's still just 19 years old. He is like six months younger than Trey, I want to say. But yeah, Trey Young, I mean, he, he's a good playmaker as well. I, I just think that because of maybe his size, it's a little bit harder for him to adapt. I, he's not especially fast either, kind of like Luka. But mm-hmm. I think Luka at least has a little bit more size to him to and his he's advantage. Not big, he's not big, little dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trey Young is is a little guy, but he was the only guy last year uh, in D one to lead the nation in both points and assists. So he's got playmaking ability, but oh, I, I sure. yeah, I just think that yeah, for for Dallas, uh, Luca was the perfect pickup, the perfect fit. So no mm-hmm. no issues there whatsoever. But anyway, you know, I was just, I was just looking at something right quick. Sorry, sure. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was Go just looking it. at something. Right you got a stretch where we just play Utah, right? Mm-hmm. And now you got a stretch where you're at Chicago on Monday. you got Utah again, this time at home. Golden State and at Memphis. That's a tough four-game stretch. So I'm going to be interested to see. And then you got a couple uh, East to East Coast teams in uh, uh, Brooklyn and Boston. So you got a tough little stretch right here. So this is where I, I want to see um, more than the last three games that we saw. I want to see this little stretch because you've got Golden State, you got Utah who beat you up pretty good. Memphis is going to still always play you tough. Um, and then you got Boston as well. So this is where I kind of want to see where the guys are, and I want to see the defensive improvements, especially from the, the uh, backcourt, because I feel like that kind of sets everything. And I, and I just want to see more from Dennis Smith Jr. as far as on the defensive effort in, because he could be such a good defensive player. And it just seems like too many times guys are getting in the paint on him, and it really – it messes up the defense. I'm not trying to bust on him, but it just messes up the flow of the defense when a guy can continue to penetrate that defense. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. But, yeah, so that's a uh, so good win for the Mavericks. Good bounce back for sure after the Utah game. Uh, with Chicago coming up, you, you're you hopeful, obviously, Dallas beat them already this year. Dallas is going to go for its second winning streak of the season at this point. Uh, I think they, yeah, they won against Minnesota and then Chicago before that was their only other two game win streak. So hopefully they can get a little momentum going here because after Chicago, things are going to get a little bit more difficult for them. Uh, they have to go to Memphis. Memphis has yet to lose at home. They are a perfect five and zero this season. Then you got mm-hmm. Golden State. So I'm not going to hold my breath there. And right. uh, then I think you come back home for Brooklyn. It's on the crawler that goes across the bottom of the, the stream here but uh mm-hmm. oh yeah it's right right at that point actually uh yeah utah yep yep pretty much right on the head so anyway well james thanks for coming on and joining me for this segment here uh, i'm gonna I set up it. yeah absolutely and we'll have you on again uh probably next week if you want man hey all, hey it's all day man i love talking mass uh, basketball talking basketball in general mm-hmm. you know like we said you know we talk about cowboys football we talk about cowboys a lot but you know, it's that good kind of uh, breather when you can kind of talk about that good basketball, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell them where they can find you real quick. Well, real quick, you can check us, uh, me out at Silver and Blue Nation, the Big Game James page. Uh, so pretty much Cowboy, that was Cowboys football, Silver and Blue Nation. You can check us out on Facebook. We'll be on actually on tonight with the game against Philadelphia, uh, 7.30 Eastern time. Oh, it looks like around the time. And then now we're on every Sunday, so you can check us out on um, 
uh, mine, Silver and, uh, Big Game James, Silver and Blue Nation. We're on YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, Twitter, um, all that good stuff. And if you don't uh, catch the show live, you can always uh, hear us on uh, Google Play, iTunes, and, um, you know, we're out there. So check us out, man. We have a good time talking Cowboys football all day. Absolutely. James, thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, appreciate you, big dog. I'll talk to you soon. 